Hi guys. I just want to see if I can get the top off this can by using abrasive paper. Yeah. Aluminium oxide waterproof abrasive paper. So this happens to be number 80. So I'm going to get it wet. There is a reason for doing this. I want to make a pinhole camera and we want the top off. I could cut it off, but I have seen videos of people just grinding it off. Uh, I can't remember who. I have seen a couple of videos on the subject on YouTube, but we'll just give it a go. Well, it would be safe to say it is working, but it's taken a lot longer than it ought to. I could have used some rougher sandpaper. I've got some tucked away somewhere with a coarser grit than that. But I've had this for a long time. I thought I might as well use it up. I don't know if the camera will pick it, uh, pick it, pick it out. But we can just see a line in the middle there, where the two sides are visible. So we've rubbed away the the dome in the middle, and we got the edge showing nearly all the way round. In fact, it might even be. Oh no, it's a little bit at the end there that's not through yet. Lovely. So there we are, one pretty smooth surface. So it works, but I think some rougher grit would have been quicker, because that took me quite a while. Well guys, we've established we can get the top off using sandpaper. Nothing new about that at all. Uh, I can see YouTube videos covering that subject going back to 2013. And I expect there's even more before that. So, we have a can. We're now going to go on to doing the pinhole camera. I'm following a, an old video by Justin Quinnell. And having got the top off, what we're now going to do is make a cap for it to cover it back over again. I've got some black card here that I'll use. Um, he ha does do a later video where you just chop the bottom off another can and use that as the lid for the can that you're using. But I'll do his original version, which is using a piece of card. You just want a bit that's um, a reasonable size. If you use A4 paper, it's just the right size to wrap around the tin. And we're going to cover it in duct tape anyway. There'll be links in my video description to Justin's videos. Uh, 2011, I think. So we're talking pretty old. Uh, right, so as I say, that's just the right size to wrap round your can. Just a tiny little bit of overlap. 
Do it around the bottom end, not the top end, because you might crush it. And you don't want to destroy your nice can. I've watched a few of Justin's videos. Uh, he uses the same patter chat on them about cutting these, uh, whatever we want to call them. This is just so you can put it on there, wrap it around and fold it in. It doesn't need to be an exact science, it's just to make a cover. And then you need a, a circle to go over the end. Again, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. In fact, in Justin's video, he makes it as unperfect as possible to demonstrate that it doesn't need to be perfect. So I'll do something similar myself. And there we go. And then he loves duct ta tape. And he likes to show you how to tear it, so I'll practice using his method. Thumb just there, and tear it. Well, mine didn't go very straight, but it did tear. So we need this round here. And one thing we're definitely not doing is sticking it to the can because this is the removable lid. So you want to be able to get it off again. And to fold all that down, get that on top. I'm sure using the um, end of your beer can is a much easier option, or lager, as this one happens to be. Let's see if I can get a straight to tear this time. No, I haven't per perfected the technique. I might just as well use the scissors, am I? I mean, they're there, ready, available. What we can see is Grandad is no good at tearing duct tape. So that basically is our lid. We could put more tape on there, but that'll do for now. So we can take it off there and stick it on there. And that's our removable lid. Next we need a pin. I have some. And we need to measure halfway down from the top. Now I've already measured it and on this particular can there's a little bit of detail here and the middle is just there. That is our pinhole. Next we need a lens cap as he calls it which is a bit of tape. I'm 
be handy if it was a decent tape that actually opened nicely. Okay, a bit of tape. Fold one end over, doesn't matter which end. Just so you can get hold of it. And you're gonna put that over your pinhole so you can open it. Obviously this needs to be nice and clean and dry in there. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. But I did wash it out and then put it on top of the radiator so it got hot and all the moisture came out. So that's basically our pinhole camera. Now he leaves these for three months, six months at a time. So you've got a very long exposure with a very small hole. And you use proper photographic paper, not printer paper, proper photographic paper, light sensitive paper, which you can get on uh, eBay, I was going to say YouTube then, get on eBay, five inches by seven inches. The distance between these two curved bits happens to be five inches and the diameter, not diameter, the circumference if you measure around is about eight inches so allowing for the gap where the pinhole lens is when you curve up your um, photographic paper put it in there and arrange it so that the pinhole is clear then it's going to sit in there nicely now he does say don't worry about the lighting because although it's light sensitive in a small amount of time that we're going to have it in the light, it's not going to suddenly go, um, go grey. But I will turn out these lights. So we've just got our um, overhead lights that are not very good in this room anyway. Uh, ambient, I think, would be the phrase, wouldn't it? Okay, so we want one piece of paper. We're going to put it in there, put the lid on, and then tape it over to keep it nice and uh, sealed. And then at some time or other, we'll go and find somewhere to put it. So, we want one piece of paper. Okay, this is our one piece of paper. Oh no, it's two pieces of paper. Whoa. Just lay that back in. Okay, problem. I don't know which side is which, but I will assume, yeah, that pale side there is going to be the non-light sensitive side, and this shiny side here, I would say, is the light sensitive side. So we want to roll it up gently, pop it in, remember where the pinhole is. That should all open out nicely and we want to turn it around so that our pinhole is exposed. <laughs> you probably don't want to put your fingers all over it either. Oh, where's my pinhole? My pinhole's there. Yeah, I've got that wrong. Oh, that's better. I can see it now. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there. You might be able to see it now. Pinholes just there. So that's our light sensitive paper on the inside. Put the cover on. That is our camera ready to work. But we will now put some more 
duct tape on it. Put this away so it's not unnecessarily exposed. Duct tape, okay. I'm sorry, Justin, I can't rip duct tape, so we're going to use scissors. Obviously, you don't want to cover your pinhole, but we do want to stick it to the can this time. Because depending on where you leave this, you might get some passerby tempted to have a look at it. I think I was a bit generous there. I suppose the logic would be to say it's got to be that, that long because we know that's enough to go all the way round. So second piece overlapping the top a little bit. Finally, another piece over the top. So that is our camera. Pinhole camera. We now need to go and stick that somewhere where it's going to be safe for many months and I've really no idea where I'm going to put it. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and I can't think where I'm going to stick it. I might just stick it in the garden. It's not going to be a very interesting picture. When you're talking about really long exposures like this, People walking past won't appear in it. They've got to stand still for days for it to actually appear. So if I stick it in the garden, we'll probably start with the trees with no um, leaves on them because it's winter time. And by the time we take it out and have a look at it, there might be leaves on it. So we will see. Um, I'll just put the other lights back on again. That's it. That's as far as we're going to go. It's December the 16th. And you're not going to see whether it works or not for another three months or six months. So you'll have to have a look at uh, Justin's video which I'll link to in the video description so you can see whether it works or not. Well, obviously his works. Whether it works for me or not will be a different story. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily. So don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.